So, thank you everybody for being here. Welcome to this session about OpenSUSE Way, uh, Sway desktop environment for OpenSUSE. Um, so, if you are in this, in this session and if we are here on stage, I guess it's because we like tiling window managers. Uh, I mean, they, they are great. They are simple, lightweight, uh, they look good. Uh, you can use them with the keyboard really well, and it's a lot of fun, right? And also, you probably like Wayland as well. There's a lot of people still using X11. Um, I mean, but, but Wayland is just better. It's more modern, it's more secure. Um, I, I like it a lot, right? So if you want to use a tiling window manager on, on uh, Wayland, you are probably using Sway or probably looking at Sway. Um, there are others, but it's like uh, the most common one, I would say. And obviously, we want to do this on OpenSUSE. You want to do this on OpenSUSE. So what is OpenSUSE Way? Um, it's a collection of tools and configs for these tools um, to provide the, the OpenSUSE look on a, on a Sway install out of the box on, a, on an OpenSUSE distro. Um, just to look nice, right? Uh, this is like simple to, to install, simple to override, so that you can get like, I don't know, 70% of, <laughs> 70 of the way to a nice desktop by installing OpenSUSE away. And then you can add on, you know, on top your special source, your special configuration. Yeah, and uh, we intentionally kept it simple so it's kind of uh, the way to start, right? It's like uh, you install it, you have everything you need to work, but then usually people customize it anyway. Like you add in your own stuff, and, uh, but it works out of, of the box. Actually, I'm using OpenSUSE way plain. <laughs> I do not add many stuff, and as you said, like it's styling Windows Manager is really cool for developers. It's, you have your keyboard, and you keep your, uh, yourself really productive. So it's simple and then you customize it anyway for your own needs. Yeah. And we actually forgot to introduce ourselves All a right, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, Filippo, go ahead. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, I'm Filippo Bonazzi. I'm a security okay. engineer at SUSE, and, but this is something completely unrelated that I do just for fun. Yeah, and my, my name is Denis Kondratenko. I'm from Altinity, but I'm a long-time OpenSUSE fan. And here is our team. Some of you are here. We did this picture from the last um, year. It's uh, actually our community that we always contribute to OpenSUSE way and uh, to different packages around the Wayland and etc. Uh, maintaining the those. So this is uh, the, our, let's say, core team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you could call it that. Yeah. Right, so what's in, um, what's in OpenSUSE way? So we, we actually ship uh, configuration files for all of these utilities. So obviously we customize Sway. Um, you, you will see with which, with what. And um, then we use Waybar for a, for a bar. We use Wofi for a menu. Uh, terminal is Alacrity. Um, Sway lock for lock screen. We use Sway notification center. Um, for notifications, WAP as a progress bar, and we use uh, GreetD as greeter and login manager. Um, and this collection of tools is not like a grand design or anything. So this is somewhere where we got over the years. So I guess you started from a subset of this, and then yeah. something got added over time, something got replaced, something got dropped. Uh, so this is a very open and alive set of configurations driven by the community, right? Yeah, like uh, three or four years, four years when that all started. Actually, there were not many tools, and Wayland was actually bleeding age. Currently, it's not, right? The, almost every desktop environment right now has support for Wayland, like uh, GNOME, KD, and etc. But those times, like, it's kind of built up. More and more tools uh, became, became popular. And right now, it's really polished. It's actually uh... yeah. So what does it look like, right? Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, surprisingly pixelated on this <laughs> on this projector, so you cannot really see, unfortunately. But we will have a live demo later, where you can hopefully make out something better than this. Um, 
at least you can kind of tell the team, I guess, right? Yeah, not too much. But so what do we customize here in Sway? You, you, you can see the open source theme, background, whatever. Um, we do use the chameleon for the workspace indicator, but that is completely lost to the pixels, unfortunately. Okay. Um, what else do we provide in our Sway configuration? By default, we support uh, multimedia, uh, keys, uh, touchpads, audio, brightness, all of this kind of stuff. We provide some screenshot utility configuration, which is quite nice. We'll see it in the demo. Um, we provide a system mode menu to reboot and shut down and so on. We provide uh, floating window support with uh, scratch pad and so on. So not too much, really. It's not too rice, but it's some stuff that you don't want to do yourself, right? Yeah. So you can just use it and, and run with it. I think that the one thing that was talking to people when this project has started was theme, right? It just was the, in the colors of OpenSUSE. It has kind of style of OpenSUSE, the background of uh, OpenSUSE. When you install it, it's completely different from Sway uh, uh, default uh, yeah. theme. And that's what has talked to people like, oh, OK, we could, we could use the same themes uh, that we actually used to, yeah. Then, as I mentioned, we, we use Waybar, which is... Uh... Yes, we use Waybar, <laughs> which is actually has uh, your notification and just the uh, bar, the status bar, whatever you use, where you can see your workspaces, when you can see your scratch pad, and you can push something there, your time, for sure, everything like you want to customize, but we, uh, it comes with preloaded widgets, like the zipper, for example, you see how many packages are not updated. In Tumbleweed, you always have some, <laughs> for sure. Uh, my system is not super up-to-date. You will see that in, uh, in the future. Then uh, there's also calendar, scratch pad I mentioned, uh, tray area, window title, everything that you expect from the uh, bar. You can click there if you would like to prefer, like, use mouse. And uh, yeah, this is kind of standard bar, but customized to for OpenSUSE, the style of uh, OpenSUSE yeah. as well. And Wofi, yeah. This is uh, kind of our launcher. Uh, it's debatable. The people say it's unsupported. I know peop yeah. It's still supported, I've seen yeah. this latest commit. It's difficult to tell. It's like half right. supported, but not really. But it's simple, and uh, it works. And that's probably why it's not maintained really well. It's just, uh, just like a simple launcher. Here you see my launch that's uh, can, it will show you system uh, uh, utilities as well as flat packs. Here you can see Telegram and Chromium, so everything in desktop files, it's also pick up and show you. So you can launch any application you have installed in your system. But uh, as people complain, not complain, but giving us feedback that it's not maintained or, for example, it lacks some features like SSH sessions or some advanced features that other launchers have, like Rofi or some others. We, yeah, we, there are a few. I mean, yeah. there's probably something better, more modern by now. Yeah. Uh, but I use it just to launch some application. If someone wants more functionality, we're happy to accept. So we are searching for a placement if you would like to contribute one. And this, as you see, also in the style of uh, in kind of in the colors of the OpenSUSE. So uh, that's why it's still there. And then uh, one, another nice thing that we have um, is the notification center. Actually, this is a big improvement that we made in the past couple of years, right? Yeah. So originally, we used to ship uh, Mac, yeah. I think, which is a perfectly good piece of software. But this one just looks nicer, right? Even, uh, even pixelated like this. So you have a notification bar that you are used to from any other electronic device that you have ever used. Um, with a list of notifications, you can set do not disturb, so you don't have the pop-ups. Uh, and then you can have interactive notifications, you can have images, title, whatever. It, it just shows the same way that you want. Um, I think this also has uh, media support, so if you have some media playing, it will show up. I'm not sure if it's on by default. I don't know. But it, it is in my config, so yeah. But this is a nice, nice thing that we added in the past couple of years uh, yeah. as a result of community. community yeah, it actually was the, the funny story that uh, two years ago, I think I was giving a talk here, and then Filippo was standing there. 
and uh, showed me this feature saying like, hey, look, I use this Sway and C on my uh, laptop, look at how neat is it. And I'm like, yeah, cool, can you submit a patch? And he did. And actually, uh, he did more because this Sway and C wasn't in, uh, in the repo, right? You submitted first the uh, RPM package, then it was built. No, I think, I think that was Danilo. Okay. I think maybe that, that was maintaining it back then. All right, but so, that, but yeah. it's like it's community. happened yeah, here. Somebody and, in the community. Yeah, yeah. and it's stick, uh, stick there. And Filippo then, since then, he took over the project and actually maintained it really well. So this is how the community works. And it's a really nice feature. I like it a lot, especially do not disturb mode. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, we also run uh, Gritty as a uh, login manager. It's a very, very simple one. Uh, actually, it's, uh, there are several uh, greeters that you can use with Gritty. I think this is GTK Grit. Yeah, this is GTK Grit, yes. Simply and customized with the OpenSUSE colors and uh, background and nothing Yeah, more. there are quite a few uh, greeters over there on your taste. I mean, we ship with Gritty because it's kind of... Uh, was first, I think, and uh, it's also kind of GTK based and looks okay. Uh, others that I tried, for example, TUI Grid is also really nice. It's just like uh, ASCII uh, login manager, really nice one. But as we needed something basic without any advanced feature, Grid D and GTK Grid just uh, stick there and it's working cool. I mean, it just gets you in. So, should we have the demo? Yeah, let's have a demo. Go ahead. So, just on a full screen. Yeah, I mean, we can move some, for example, beyond this way. So, we can do all the neat stuff, like moving this one here, for example. Well, this is the terminal, right? So let's close it, maybe. So this is how the plane uh, stuff uh, works. Yeah, what we want to see first. Um, if you open a few terminals, what does it look like? Like, like by default, something. they will open uh, in the vertical way. So you can see some gaps here, right? So this is a style. You can have it whatever you want, but it's by default uh, looks like that. But you can also open it uh, horizontally as well, like that, like it's just keystroke and uh, you're all done. I mean, this is nothing new, this is the same as it was in i3 yep. 15 years ago. The X just monad, whatever you yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we have a, a workspaces, right? Yeah, yeah this is uh, one is active, is a neat chameleon over there. Before it was all the chameleon, but people get tired. Yeah, <laughs> said, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. need numbers. We want it was to a bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but right now it's numbers and chameleon. On this screen, I have only two workspaces, and on this screen, another seven or so, right? And uh, this uh, active one, this one is not active. You can switch between them. What it was? Nine? Nine, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So you can switch between them, you can see which one is the active one. What is this, That's Filippo? The, it's a crash pad indicator. Crash pad indicator, what is the crash pad? <laughs> so this way, this is a way to handle uh, floating windows in a way that you can recall on every, on every workspace. So what do, you, what do you have in there? For example, VS Code and this open through the way. By the way, this will commit into the repo and you can see this presentation or find this presentation. Yeah, 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 on our GitHub. Yeah. So you can uh, switch between them. I have a couple of them, like some window for this browser, some window with VS Code, whatever, and they just come up as the floating window whenever you need it. Or you can do this with uh, keystroke as well, so it's the same. Everything in Tiling Managers and OpenSUSE is actually keyboard-oriented. So this is why it's so productive for developers who just like have everything under your fingers. Yeah, and then we have all the rest of the bar, I guess, to look at. So yeah, what is, what is this guy? You want to you wanna close from... Uh... Yeah. So this one... Oh, it's asking for password. This one, it's telling us how many packages they have not updated. It's like 363, and you can click on it and go update. It's a really simple terminal application, right? And then it closes when it's done. Yeah. 
And I think most of the icons in, in the bar are configured to do something on click as well, Yeah, right? for example, yeah, if we click here, you can see network name for Wi-Fi or, or whatever. This is the Bluetooth, you can switch on and off, right? Right now it's disabled, it's enabled. Uh, we can enable it by clicking, and then uh, by left clicking on this one, you can go into the configuration. Right now we have, what is this? Uh, Bluetooth CTL, this one? Yeah, this So is it's the, I don't know, command line interface to handle Bluetooth, but we do have um, in the works a replacement with Bluetooth, which should be a TUI based uh, Bluetooth manager. Yeah, it looks like this yeah. one, so it's actually a little bit better in the yeah, a little bit better in terms of uh, choosing something, connecting really quick, or switching on and off. Uh, from yeah, here. yeah. So we are thinking about switching to that one. And then uh, you want to show the calendar? Calendar, right. Some neat addition was the calendar. Uh, that's like, uh, could quickly show you the weeks and uh, the days, and also in open source style, right? And you can even open the whole year over there to see the calendar, whole calendar. Yeah, that's, that looks kind of broken, but uh, I'm sure it can be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, the single month calendar is super useful. Yeah, I, I actually never use it uh, like in this way, right? I uh, actually, usually I use it in the first click in the terms of uh, just uh, see in the week or yeah, month. And actually, if you go to the calendar for the single month, so if you right click again and go back to the calendar, the month calendar. Yeah, one second, I can miss it. Okay. Yeah, if you scroll mm -hmm. on it, it can go to the previous month and the next yeah, month yeah. and so on. So it's quite useful. Yep. Um, and then I think a couple of things we also wanted to show were the screenshot menu. Yep, so in order to have a screenshot, I mean, you can for sure do that in the, uh, in any manager, right? Usually it's what, a command print screen, right? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And we don't have a visual manager, right, for that. Like, other distribution usually have like, oh, you're taking screenshots, select yeah. something. Uh, here, with Grim, it's uh, a little bit hard-coded, but you have uh, added the keystrokes for that, so we can just push, and uh, there is a menu over there that allows you to actually choose what you want to screenshot, like select area, or full screen, or some applications. So, for example, if we push A, right, that allows us to select some area and uh, make a screenshot, and it will be saved in the, the pictures in the current configuration, right? Yeah, and actually, I don't know if you saw, uh, there's also the alternative, if you want, you can save the screenshot directly to clipboard by pressing Control A, yep. and actually we're thinking of adding also uh, saving to an interactive editor, I think, right? Like like on Android or... or yeah, Android. what is that? Uh, Tell swappy, us. Swappy, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, I think I have an open issue for that, but it's, it's not done yet. <laughs> but we are thinking about it, yeah. And what it will be the doing? You said. Uh, so you can take a screenshot in an application, like a graphical application, where then you can, say, draw an arrow or add some text or color or highlights, you know, n normal stuff. Okay, cool. That's what you, you don't have to do it by yourself. It's already done for you, and it's yeah. under a simple menu. Like, for example, the menu you can use to reboot and uh, turn it off and so on. Yeah, this is also like to log off, uh, you need to either type it in the command line or just have uh, on the keystrokes, uh, whatever the key beatings you have for yourself, and this is the uh, default one, how to log out from, or log the screen, right? Yeah, I think yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. I think that's it for the demo, push, right? Push notifications. Ah, that's right, yeah, there you go ahead, go ahead. So, like, right now, if you could see, there is the, this, I don't see it, where is the menu? The bell, yeah, at the very end. Okay, yeah, this is the notification bar, or how uh, it's called, uh, and let's push some notification over there. Uh, okay. Or you, and you can see them 
here, and you can, uh, there, there will be pictures, etc. By the way, I don't know why in the history it, it doesn't show me the, your stuff, but then you can see they actually, if they from the same stream, they got uh, combined, right, together, and you can either uh, dis uh, mute, or no, not mute, but uh, read, dismiss, them, dismiss yeah. by, one by, by one. one by one, or maybe you can do that also like uh, all together, right? By you want to toggle the, the do not disturb? So you can, you can also see the... Yep, let's do that. So if you do not have do not disturb mode, you will see that uh, notification in, uh, like in real time, if you prefer that. Yep. Pretty nice. <laughs> okay. So we show the notifications, push bar, this... All, I think, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, can you find the, screen? Can find yeah. the presentation again? Screenshot system. Ah, WOP, volume. WOP, volume, right, yeah. yeah. So we also have configured uh, volume and brightness controls with WOB so that it shows as a bar. Can you yeah, so if I'm uh, brightness, or uh, for example, this is a brightness, menu, or that it looks the same all the time, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you strike in the, some multimedia keys and it shows you yeah. the progress, which, uh, what is the current volume or, or not. For example, this is muted. Okay, I'm muted. Um, okay, and system menu, you just wrote it just to yes. log, log yes. it out. I think, yeah. Okay, then go, which one is three or which one is that? Nine. Eight or? Nine, eight. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's perfect, right? There's no, no problem whatsoever. I, I don't have any problems, but people always do. I mean, they use uh, <laughs> uh, things differently, so yeah. That's, especially when you install it in the first time, right? You have a system installed and you don't see it. Packages got updated, system changes a little bit, and the issues appear all the time. Yeah, so we, we do have a few um, issues open, a uh, couple even lot long standing. Like, for example, uh, the biggest sore, I think, is the installation. So, we do have um, OpenSUSE Away role in the installer for, for Tumbleweed and so on, but um, it doesn't do everything. So, I think you still need to enable uh, the login manager, Grid D, uh, so disable what you have previously and enable Grid D. Um, and also, I think this, uh, you still also need to set these configuration files, uh, but this can be fixed. So this is one thing we definitely want to fix. Yeah, I, I was like, uh, the history behind uh, enabling the grid D and setting the graphic target is that actually I was lazy to do the XDM thingy. So currently yeah. to, like I was, uh, uh, was trying to achieve the goal to be a full Wayland. I didn't want to install any X packages and XDM is one of them, and it actually has dependencies. And in current configuration, as I understand, maybe something changes, but as I understand, you, XDM is kind of abstract to other uh, display managers, which then update what is called... Uh, display the graphical target? No, 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 no. Display that's, manager service. No, how they change in, like, to GDM and uh, to... Uh, update alternative? Yes, update right. alternative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use kind of update alternative method to set which one is uh, uh, now. So XDM is default, and then it's linked to whatever is current, like uh, light DM or whatever. And but I was that's lazy. ugly, right? Yeah, it's yeah. super ugly. Actually, Fedora, as I remember and understand, does it differently. They have a system deep sets for uh, Windows managers, so you like uh, display managers. So whatever you enable in the system, whatever is installed by presets, then it gets enabled, and actually you have that in this way. It's a better way, but um, I don't have time to uh, discuss this actually in the community, how it should be done in OpenSUSE, but OpenSUSE is this update alternative is XDM. Yeah, I, I think we can provide a good solution with the Fedora style. Yeah, this, this is one one. It's like probably a longer term. Short term, if anyone wants to contribute XDM <laughs> proper, <laughs> that's, that's okay. Is that a question or? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So if you're doing this, uh, one thing I've done with Aeon is I just make 
additional systemd presets packages. So like you could just make one for Sway. And right. That, that shove Greek D in there, and then you can avoid all that XDM stuff. Yeah. So Throw the that first package is... in the pattern mm -hmm. should be fine. And that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So the preset is working, right? If you will add the preset, but it will only enable grid D, right? It's, it's possible. But how to switch uh, from a default display manager to our display manager? A system role. It's a line in the system role for, for in. Uh, okay. In yeah, we need to look into this. Actually, yeah. I should have thought of this myself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, the, so the only one you have left is a packaging issue with those packages. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you are doing this uh, problem with installs all the time. For us, it's like one time in a year. So this is the. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. we will try this. Um, right, so also some other ugly things that we still have and we need to fix. Uh, there are still some hard-coded paths somewhere in the configuration. We also still have some utilities that unfortunately do not support the user ETC move. So still some ugly stuff. Not everything in the configuration can be overridden uh, by, the, by the user. We have, I think, the lock screen and uh, Wob configuration that cannot be overridden. I don't think the solution is difficult particularly, but it just takes time and effort, and uh, we, we want to fix it. Another thing which uh, probably Richard has a lot of experience with is if you want to run this uh, on, uh, on any kind of micro OS, uh, I can only expect that there might be some issues with SC Linux and uh, the transactional nature of the system. No issue? That's lovely. Right. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I used uh, microOS for some time this way, but then uh, dropped it because I uh, was tired for reset and reboots. Now I need to try your ion once again. I will try that. Yeah. That should be super. So we are not the first to go down this route with, uh, with um, Sway on, on a transactional system. I personally don't use it. That's why it's still an open point. But I expect that there are probably some lesson learned uh, in, in one of these other projects. I don't know the state, how, like, how alive are these projects, do you know? But it's a cool experiment. I, I stole a couple of things from there. You know? Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, the arm is raising, right? So we have M1 chips first, then now Snapdragon, and probably will come up to the uh, to the to Linux very soon. So uh, we had the issue was rising uh, recently because that uh, opens through the way someone installed it on a P or some some board and it wasn't working because we had GFX boot. Uh, that's easy to disable. Such kind of packages we can disable, uh, but there are other packages over there that uh, might not work. For example. There are some libraries for Waybar, they do not work. Like, Waybar is working, but probably some features wouldn't. I don't know for sure. Uh, recently, I just for this presentation, I tested it on the, my Raspberry Pi 4, and it was working good. Actually, it uh, started, all was good. The only thing what you need is additional packages, for example, for the, your video uh, card, right? So in the case of uh, Pi, it's V4, VC4, and also, what I did is I built GeoOS uh, image with Kiwi, really nice, really easy, and it was working. Working, and you don't need to install anything, everything pre-built, everything enabled, you just boot it, and it actually runs op way, open source away uh, directive right away. So if anyone interested in this kind of images, we can easily do them for ARM, for all different boards and all different uh, uh, ARM platforms. So uh, that's already ready. Maybe we do can go ahead with Kiwi image and you can install it now, but there are some uh, links that you can use uh, GeoS image right now as well. Right, so what's then left for us on, on our plate immediately to fix? Engage more people to fix it for us. Ah, that's right, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we do have a few open issues that we want to fix ourselves that we have kind of on our plate, uh, as we mentioned. We probably want to support more login managers, uh, so not only Greek D, but also you know LightDM or GDM or whatever you already have. Um, improve the installer, edit the screenshots, and so on. We have also have another nice community PR open to change the brightness control from linear to exponential. It actually makes more sense. Uh, so hopefully we can get this done. But there are more things we would like to get done. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, open to any contribution from the try community. it out, and you will find out what you are missing, and then actually you either can contribute yourself or, not, or open the issue. Uh, we have GitHub, we have uh, Build Project over there, uh, Telegram channel, Wiki. So uh, yeah, get engaged. Happy to accept any contribution. Yeah, I think this is a fun little project to use and. It's not too heavy, so you can just run it and uh, try and let us know. Yeah. yeah, I think we are on time, and uh, I don't know if we have uh, time for questions, but if you have some, right. just catch us. I think that's it. Yeah, All right. just Thank catch you very us much. around. <laughs> Thank you.